How's it going, guys? So it is 2.49 a.m. Thursday, March 31st here in Japan. Absolute crackhead right now, but I'm going to power through a question. I told myself I would do that before I go to sleep. I want some modicum of productivity. This is a past level question, okay? Super easy question that you need to know. No excuses, all right? So before we get started, I will be my frequent asshole. Tell you to subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. The link is down below. Find me on Telegram. Recently created Telegram group and channel. Links are down below. Now let's start the clip. 11-month-old girl, one-day history of cough and fever. She's febrile at 102 Fahrenheit. Pulse oximetry at 91%. Wheezes and crackles bilaterally. Question just wants to know the most likely explanation for these findings. Now, clearly, uh, pulse oximetry is low, should be as close to 100% as possible. If 93% or less, patients should be in hospital. So let's just walk through the answer choices here. We'll go backwards. Choice C, tracheitis, wrong answer. I have never seen this on any NBME material for step one or two. It's a complete nonsense diagnosis that has no relevance to USMLE. Sometimes you will see this in... Uh, resources for 2CK material and students are like, oh my God, tracheitis, like how does that one present? Doesn't show up, non-existent on NBME material. In theory, this could be due to staph aureus uh, because it's the upper airway, right? Trachea, it could present with strider in theory. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, laryngeal papillomatosis, wrong answer, but important diagnosis for step one and two. You need to know human papillomavirus, HPV 6 and 11, virus that causes genital warts, condylomata acuminata, vertical passage from the mother's birth canal to the throat of the neonate can cause growths on and around the vocal cords, okay? It's called laryngeal papillomatosis. They'll show you an endoscopy uh, on the NBME exam, tell you that there's growths around the larynx, say a biopsy shows a, a papillary structure with fibrovascular cores, and then the answer will just be HPV 6 or 11, okay? It's, uh, it's an important diagnosis, not exceedingly high yield, but it's, it's a good diagnosis to be aware of. Choice C, epiglottitis, wrong answer, albeit high yield. Of course, unvaccinated children, immigrants. Uh, this patient, nothing about the vaccination history, but the presentation is not classic for epiglottitis. This would be, uh, so amophilus influenza type B, and classically will present with severe dysphagia, difficulty breathing in a tripod positioning with drooling and high fever, okay? Um, there will be some variation. You can get a thumbprint sign, an x-ray of the neck, uh, but uh, they will make it often clear in the vignette. They will mention something about unvaccinated status or immigrant status or severe dysphagia, okay? It's dysphagia, what the fuck am I saying? Dyspnea, okay, difficulty breathing, dysphagia is trouble swallowing. That's the uh, 2.52 a.m. coming into play here. It's the wrong fucking answer. Choice B, croup, wrong answer. This is laryngotracheobronchitis. This is parainfluenza virus, AKA paramyxovirus. Uh, this would be steeple sign, a narrowing on lateral x-ray of the neck. This is just gonna be a bark, a barking seal-like cough, okay? Uh, very buzzy. They can mention a kid who has a cough that's, uh, that improves when he's brought out in the, the cold air by his dad. Okay, I've seen that on an NBME exam, uh, but they, the US family likes to compare and contrast this with uh, epiglottitis, okay? It's the wrong fucking answer. Choice A, bronchiolitis, correct answer. Okay, this is RSV bronchiolitis, respiratory syncytia virus, okay? So you need to know that children under the age of 18 months who have bilateral wheezes, fever, and it's some sort of, you know, your impression will be maybe a pneumonia, bilateral, what's going on here? I mean, too young to be mycoplasma, Okay, mycoplasma, bilateral atypical pneumonia, and generally teenagers and older, classic presentation. But in pediatrics under the age of 18 months, you need to know RSV bronchiolitis. So what the 2CK does gives you a very similar uh, vignette, okay, like a one or two liner, easy. And then the answer, they'll give you many answer choices, and the correct answer will be uh, community-acquired viral infection. Okay, very easy. And students will be choosing things like, is it toxin mediated? Wrong fucking answer. Okay, I mean, this is just RSV bronchiolitis, past level, as I said. You know the deal. I'm going to continue making more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.